the way 2020 was going, I really thought, man, we're not even gonna get the Air Max 90 that matters the most in the history of the Nike Air Max 90. But you know what? Nike didn't let us down. It's arriving on November 9th for most people here in the United States. Thankfully, Nike dropped GS and preschool sizes last week. And shout out to my boy CO now 23 and his fiance because my birthday gift has arrived early. And thanks to that, you guys get to see it. So all my GS people, settle in. Let's take a look at the Nike Air Max 90 Infrared, AKA Radiant Red for 2020. with TJ aka TJ Two Shoes Chains and we're gonna jump right into it so if you are not already subscribed I advise you just go ahead and hit the subscribe button uh, certainly hit the like button it helps myself out as a creator it helps all creators out and then Two Swoosh Crew you have to sound off in the comment section I'm curious if you're going for this because part of me thinks that uh, there are a number of individuals that don't care about this sneaker releasing again and I get it it's come out a few times and we're gonna talk about that but listen, as somebody that loves Nike, loves the Air Max line in its totality, uh, this was a must for me. So let's just jump right into the sneaker itself, or really let's just jump into the history of it. Because again, we are giving thanks to Tinker Hatfield. And there are some people that, listen, you need to give the man his roses right now because I'm not gonna say single-handedly, certainly he had a team working with him, but Tinker Hatfield is known for reviving the Air Jordan line with the Air Jordan Retro 3, right? So if we look at the history and kind of the timeline, 1987, the man gave us the Air Max 1. To me, that's still the greatest sneaker of all time. It's the one, if I only had to have one sneaker, that's the one I would have. So he gave us the Air Max 1 in 1987. And then if we move along to you know, a year later, we had the Air Max Lite. So it was technically considered the Air Max 2. And they did some revamping on the actual Air Max 1. They kind of dropped some of the bulk and everything that was associated with the shoe. Now, he went straight to the Air Jordan line. And that's when we know uh, we had the, I would say, the revival of the Air Jordan line with uh, the Jordan 3 in 1988. But when it comes to the Air Max 90, literally 1990 so it was technically called the air max 3 and we already had that first look at visible air with air max 1 that's what made it so revolutionary but now with the air max 90 he had to improve upon that and so we get a look into the technology right we always want to know what's inside what's inside in terms of technology so instead of just being able to visibly see it we got the iconic infrared window where we could actually look into the midsole to see oh okay there's actual air there that's what's you know giving me that comfort that's what's making the shoe as iconic as it is and then the design in itself is just awesome so for people that aren't even really into this like they are not diehard sneakerheads they can recognize an Air Max 90 when they see it, but I think it's the fact that the infrared, the gray, the black, and the white all put together, I think really helps solidify the fact that this is a very, very legendary sneaker for all people, whether you're a novice or whether you've been in this game forever since you could walk or before you could walk. So when it comes to the Air Max 90, Infrared. Now they wanted to call it Radiant Red. They went back to the real name of the color itself. I don't have an issue with that at all. Just know uh, that name can be interchange interchanged. So if you hear infrared or you hear radiant red kind of in 2020, that's what it's referring to. And earlier this year, um, Nike, uh, the actual Nike SB line, paid homage to the Air Max 90 
uh, infrared. And I think that says a lot when you have a line that's doing well on its own, right? Like the Nike Dunk and Nike uh, Dunk, the SB line, they're doing so well on their own in 2020, but they knew well enough that this shoe is amazing. It's iconic. This shoe will capture the attention of everyone. It certainly did mine. So uh, this year I actually picked up my very first Nike SB Dunk. This is the Low Pro in the infrared. And everything you see here on this shoe is exactly what you will find in the brand new 2020 GS version. Now understand this, GS, I get it. We get snubbed a lot. We don't get the cool boxes. We don't get hang tags on a lot of items. It, it's true. It's true for everybody that says, well, women get the best, the best sneakers and kids, you guys get amazing things. Listen, okay, bare minimum is still nothing that I'm going to applaud. We still don't get everything that you would get in a men's pair or even in a women's pair. But when it came to this shoe, the fact that, thank you for the mesh, because that's actually what I was afraid of. I didn't want to go for a GS pair. I was afraid they're going to give us leather. And if you look at all of the other Air Max 90s that have released earlier this year, they're leather, they're not mesh. It gives a totally different aesthetic and appeal to the shoe that I don't care for. Therefore, you didn't see me pick up any of the other Air Max 90s that released uh, from back in the day. So you did see me pick up the Gold Trail Vibes. Yes, I absolutely did that. And I do have this, the Off-White uh, Desert Ore, which is one of my favorite Off-White um, collaborations by Virgil ever. Like, I, I think he did an amazing job with this shoe. But I was really hesitant because I didn't want the shoe to not feel like the actual shoe should. And Nike did not skimp on that. So what you're seeing now is the GS version. I have a size six and a half and you have the mesh, you have the suede, you have the leather. It's everything that I wanted in this sneaker. Now the actual infrared hits that are everywhere else is really what brings this shoe to life. And if you know what I'm talking about, it's on the tongue, it's on the back heel plate, right? And that back heel plate is just as recognizable as the shoe itself. I think that's actually what gives it um, so much shine in terms of the design because it was different than the Air Max 1. We were used to just Nike Air being stitched on the back, but now we have this full heel plate that's on the back and you absolutely, you know what that is. Now, in terms of release in the United States and then for kids and pricing, just so you know, so this isn't set to release until November 9th in the States, but over in Europe and Japan, they already had a release, especially for adult and men's sizes. So uh, if you were able to get that awesome, CL Now 23 already has his review up. So I definitely advise you guys go check that out if you are in uh, the men's sizing category, because he already has that up for you and the on foot. So he's on it, proud of him. And thank you again so much guys for the early birthday gift. For GS, this dropped again last week and in preschool sizes. I believe on October 21st is maybe when I place my order. Um, for GS, they're 115. So with tax, I paid 123, I believe, and I didn't pay for any extra shipping, and they still got here in a really good time. Uh, for preschool, of course, it'll be a little bit less, but then you have toddler that's available, and I believe they're even gonna do infant soft bottoms. So when they say the whole family can get these, they certainly do mean the whole family, but Hands down for 2020, this was the Air Max 90 that I wanted. I bypassed all of the others and I'm not saying some of them weren't amazing. They really were. But when it comes to the history of the Air Max 90, this was the one. And I know it's come out so many times before the 2005, 2008, 2010, 2015, I think. Uh, 2012 when we got the Hyperfuse and that actually went over well. Nobody thought it would and it did go over well, which bravo to Nike for taking that risk. But I do think that lends kind of some credence to the fact you can't please everybody. You certainly can't please the sneaker community because people are upset when shoes don't retro enough, but then you guys are kind of upset that this retros a lot. So pick which you like and don't like, or I'm simply happy I'm able to get this again. And I think a lot of other people are too, because you've probably trashed the current pairs from previous years that you have, right? They they could just not be doing well. So now, especially if you are in a GS, we get some respect, okay, for the Air Max 90 of, uh, I think all time. I'm just gonna be honest with you, of all time. So if I had to only pick one, that would be the one I got. As you can see, I even have the Air Max 90 chain on today in honor of this sneaker. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be sure to do another video, a follow up with an on foot, as well as how I would style this shoe. I already got the fits ready. So maybe this weekend I'll be able to get that out to you. Thank you so much. As always, act your age, not your shoe size. Peace out.